I'm Gary Jenkins and welcome to the Jenkins Art Studio. Today we're going to paint some onions. <laughs> I know it's crazy but that's what we're going to do. We're going to paint a red onion and we're going to paint a white onion. Let me show you. I've got some onions down here and at home when you paint onions or you go to the store to buy them, make sure you get the really big onions. And you set these up on a table, put a light on them, and uh, start painting away. Now, the reason you put a light on your onions is so that you get some strong lights and darks going. So don't forget to do that. Let's take a look at the painting that I look at when I'm doing the painting up here for you. Whoa, boy, there it is. It has a beautiful gold frame around it, but you can see the onion. There's the red one and the, and the uh, kind of an orangey white one. We have some of the long green onions in the front to give it some movement, and we have some beautiful color in the middle. Okay, let's come up here and let's see what we've got. We've got a canvas up here I've already prepared. And let me tell you what's on here. Now, this is a 16 by 20 canvas, and it has a gray background on it. Now the gray is acrylic and it's dry and you can use some white and black acrylic and make, mix up a gray and just paint it on there with a good old sponge brush. And on top of that, after it's dried, I put on here some transparent base medium, which is wet. This is going to help my paint to slip and slide along. Now I use paper towels all the time. I have a medium down here that I use to help the paint to flow. Let's come on down to the palette and let's get this old painting started down here. First of all, we're going to take some, some crimson and we're going to take a little touch of white with the crimson because we have to put a little sketch on here first. So we're going to come up here and we're going to have a red onion right about in this area and we're going to just sort of sketch this in. It's sort of an oval shape with a nice top that comes up this way. Now this onion, the center of the onion will run like this at an angle. Okay? It's because whenever you put something at an angle, something that's, that's turning, it adds movement to the painting. I'm going to wipe the brush off, pick up some orange and a little touch of uh, yellow. And the brush I'm using is a good old filbert brush. And we'll sketch this one in, put the little top knot on there, come on around. This one here is pretty straight. It's a little, maybe it's curved a little bit to the right, just a hair, but not too much. This is the one, the red one, is the one that we want really turning at an angle to add movement. Anytime you have something that's straight, it's static and has no movement. So any, it, like my brush, if I hold it straight, it has no movement. But if I turn it, it has movement. And that's what we're doing with this one onion. Let's come on down and let's get this red onion started. I'm going to take some crimson. Now, we, I, will, I always work from dark to light. And the brush, of course, is a filbert brush. And a filbert brush is the brush that has the rounded corners. I'm going to take our crimson, come on up here. I'm starting with the dark side. I'm not using any medium because I already have that wet, wet uh, base on the bottom. And I put my dark in first around the bottom, up the top, and up, the, up that long part on the top up there. So there's our dark going in. Now I want it a little bit darker on the bottom. So let's take a little touch of black with the crimson, no medium, and put that on there. And this adds an extra little dark to the bottom. Also, we're going to come back down and take some green, green and uh, sienna. I'm going to place a strong dark underneath and sort of brush that out. And this will be sort of a shadow that's going to be underneath and help that onion to sit down. Now, between the dark here and here, I want that, the base of that onion to be a little darker. So I'll take some black and green and get in there and really darken that base up. So you can hardly tell where the onion stops and where the bottom, uh, the dark starts. I'm going to darken this up around in here a little bit too. And there's a little bit of a dark running around in here. Now the top part has, is white and a touch of orange. 
no medium, and I'm working dry. I'm going to take that up here and just sort of mush the brush. Whoa, boy, there we've got some color cooking now. And it has a little ragged top. <laughs> I have the onions next to me, and I'm smelling these onions, and they're making me hungry. Now, coming on down, we're going to take a little more orange and yellow. And right about in here, we have to get a feeling of the, that skin, a little, little more orange, that skin that's, that's on the top. And that, that kind of comes back like this. You see how I'm stroking that? It kind of gives some ridges, and right into the dark it goes. You see that? Boom. And we're going to come down and take our crimson and white. Sort of makes sort of a pinkish color. And we're going to come up here, and we start in the middle. Now, your first stroke in the middle is straight. Everything to the right curves this way. It's just about the same way that you would uh, do that if you were painting a mum. <laughs> and crimson and a little touch of orange. And we're going to go curve it the other way. Now watch me walk that right into the dark, and it gets darker by itself. And we're going to have a little edge sticking out there. No highlight yet. This is called the middle tone. Now I'm going to grab some dark from down here, because I want a feeling of that skin coming up. There it is and across here. You can see how easy it is to paint onions. It's wonderful. These are wonderful paintings to put in the kitchen area of your home. Now this is very flat. We need to pick up some white. Now watch, we're going to put the sparkle on the onion, because you have the skin picks up light and reflects it right back at us. So there's that beautiful highlight going in we're going to take and pick up a little highlight. Well, let's not use white there. Let's come down and pick up some rose matter. Rose matter. And take some of that and bring it up here. And this time we're going to stroke, since this is sort of hanging over, an edge hanging over, we'll just pull that back. So you get the feeling of that, that skin hanging over the edge. I'm going to take a little bit more of that rose matter down here because the onion is just so full of wonderful color that we want to try to get as much color in there as possible. We're going to take a little touch of our blue and white, very dry, blue and white. And we're going to take some of that up here. Look at that cool color. You see, this is all warm. As soon as you introduce a blue, which is a cool color, out that edge pops. Yes, we're going to take a little of that here. We might find a little of it over here. It's working great. Keep it loose and keep it free. And if you're a beginner out there, you can do this stuff. I use plenty of paper towels. You'll see me into these towels all the time. I'm going to pop up to the top, take some more of this white. And I'm going to really go for a nice light background. Uh, this, this top knot up here is going to be catching plenty of light maybe a little shot of light in here. Keep it nice and loose and free. Don't tighten up with the old onion. Let's come on over to the other one. Let's start that one. That's our, our ochre and sienna. Ochre and sienna, we can use that to start this sort of white onion. Though it's more of an orangey, warm color than it is. It's not a white white. I'm going to take that all the way on up. We're going to come up. Now, this one has a little different top. It has a very dark top. <laughs> That's what's great about onions. They have so much character. And we're going to come in here and paint this in dark and bring that down. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take orange and yellow for the skin part that flips over the top this way. And that kind of sticks out there a little bit, right up into the dark on the top, comes around, and up, still playing with it. Don't over blend. A lot of folks get into this stuff and they start painting onions. I used to teach onions in my workshops. And one of the problems was that they kept over blending and it got too smooth and you lost the character of the onion. Paint what you see, paint what you feel. Now in here, we have some white. This is more, this is going to be 
our reflected color. And notice that curve, how it's curving, and it gets darker, 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 and it goes the other way, curves, and gets darker, darker, darker. Mm -hmm. There's our nice gloss on the skin. And then we're going to come up and pick out a little more of that gloss up on the top. Really want that old onion shining out. Now we see the dark on the bottom. And we want to make the transition between the bottom of the onion and this dark a little more subtle. So we'll take orange, and our job now is to darken this orange up. So what are we going to do? Let's take a little crimson. Well, that's not going to do it. Maybe a little black. And there we go. A little more orange. Play around on your palette till you have the right color. And we'll take that up here. And we're going to add, oh, still not dark enough. You never know what you have until you get up there. <laughs> I'm going to take a little of that in there. Now we can pull a little of that dark from the bottom. I'm going to borrow some of it from down here and pull some of it in here. So we sort of marry the two together. Or we can take our blending brush, our good old blending brush, and blend that together. Notice how it softens the transition. It, it, there it goes. We're losing the bottom of the onion right into dark. Yes, good stuff. The top of the onion, we have another brush. This is called a uh, liner brush or a twiggy brush, or just a brush with long hair. <laughs> Let's come on down to the palette and let me show you this brush. This is a wonderful brush that you'll see me using throughout this whole series. And Catherine will be coming on later down the line and doing some great technique tapes for you, which you're going to love. And I'm going to do some landscapes. Yeah, I know you're used to me doing florals all the time, and I'm going to do some landscapes. Let's take a little white and roll that brush. Make a point and come on up here. And this has these little things that kind of come off. Yeah, well, that didn't, come, didn't quite get light enough. I'll pick up some more color and see if, there it is. And this has these little things that come off. And these are all over the place. And don't make them thick. Kind of scoot up to the top and around. <laughs> Don't want to get too many of these sticking up, and it'll look like somebody scared your onion. And it comes around, lots of them coming down, drooping down. I don't know what this top is called, but it's there. All right, how's that looking? Maybe that's a little strong. <laughs> and we can, if it's too strong, we can add a little green to it to knock it down. But let's get that top going. And we'll just soften it up just a little bit. Now I had, I taught this uh, painting, oh boy, several years ago. Oh, let me, well, before I get into that, let's take a little yellow and orange and come on down to the bottom. Down in here, we're going to have plenty of color. And uh, that's yellow. I'm not going to mix it. I'm just going to lay it on there. Let's take a little cad red light. Boy, you know, I didn't use any of this in the onion. <laughs> let's take this cad red light. And let's lay, I need some of that up in here. Oh yeah, that's what I want. Look at that color. It's bouncing. Yes, yes, yes. You know what, I think I like painting onions because it's just like floral painting. You get all this wonderful, bright color. Now I was gonna tell you, I had a student of mine painting these onions and she uh, belonged to this art association where they went out and they showed their paintings uh, at, the, uh, at the outdoor art, what do you call those, art things, or art carnivals, or whatever it is, where you put the tents up and everybody sells their work. She did onion paintings, and she took two onion paintings in, framed them up, and put $250 on them, and, and sat there, and boom, boom, they sold. She told me when I met her in a class that she had brought her paints the next day, and she sat down, and painted onions and sold every one of them that she did. She sold them and sold them. She painted and sold, painted and then sold. So onions are great little sellers. Yes. Okay. So you guys, paint these onions up. If you're out there selling your work, they're a great little seller. There's, there, there's something about onions that not many people paint them. And I think for that reason alone, 
the fact that people can't find paintings like this around, that they buy them. Remember, they put little gold leaf frames on them and they sell the, uh, they, they hang them in their kitchen. Now, we want to transition here. That's a little too strong. So we're going to take our blending brush, blend that out, and blend it over here. Oh, now, <laughs> you get a nice soft edge to it. And look at that. Now, sometimes when you're blending brush, you know what I do with these little wild hairs? When I find hairs on the canvas, you know what I do with them, don't you? I'm going to take my blending brush here, and I go in here, I'm going to pick these off. And I'm going to take these hairs off of here, and what I do with them, I save them up here. And pretty soon, I'm going to have a whole head of hair. Hmm. It might be sable hair, <laughs> but at least I'll, I'll have the coolest hair in town. Yes, I will. Where were we? We want to blend it. Oh, we already did that. Oh, look at that. Now, we have some green onions. Well, that, that's those long, stemmy green onions that come out. We're going to take yellow. I've already mixed it up down here. Yellow, and there's some color down here called cinnabar green. You can use that. Or you can take yellow and blue. Mix up a green. And let's come up here and watch me overlap that back onion, and I'm using the side of the brush, and that onion comes right on out, and that's just the stem of one onion. Uh, we're going to, there's another little thing that comes off that's also attached to that. Another one that comes out of here. And this, this one, you want it to come out further than this one. Let's put a little shadow under there. We'll pick up some black and crimson. And under here, and we're going to put a little shadow under that one. And we're going to put a little shadow under this one. Uh huh. Now, onions have that wonderful white little tip to it that we want to put on. And I'm, remember, we're using the filbert brush. And we're going to come up here and get that, sort of that little edge that goes on. And that kind of blends on back. And that comes out, well, to little things that come off. They're little crazy little things, but they're, they're wonderful that they're there. Because they add a lot of movement to our painting. Now, on the end of that, we're going to take a little orange, and we're going to put a little touch of that right in here. Not much. Wipe the, uh, the brush on your towel, and we'll blend that out very carefully. Now, we do have uh, a painting packets, which you can refer to if you, which will help you to get this pattern on your canvas. Okay, let's get that, woo. All right, these are tricky little devils. I can go through the whole painting and then all of a sudden, boom, boom, these little guys give you a problem. Okay, there's that one. Then we're gonna come in and take a little green and white. And we have another one up in here. That's sort of a bulgy end to it. Better get some more white on there. And you guys, you know, you have more time at home to take, to do these things. I just have a short amount of time here. Okay, well that looks good. Sounds like I'm making excuses. <laughs> and the orange and yellow to get that little in. Now you can use this brush here or you could use your liner brush, but this one seems to be working okay. And keep these real skinny and they're just sort of, they're just sort of there. Now we're gonna take our color up here We'll take a little red and green, and we're going to pull some green in to sort of tie in with the long, skinny onions. And then we're going to get that in here, and a little touch in here, and a little touch of white. And look at that go on. Notice how loose and how free it is. Yes. What else do we have? I want to make sure these things aren't sticking out. Now, if they're sticking out too much, take some green and let's knock it back just a little bit, okay? So that we don't have a bunch of those uh, green greens popping out at us. We could take our liner brush again. Come on down, we'll pick up some white. 
And we have, on the little white little guys, they have little ridges. So we have time to do it. So we might as well put these little ridges in there. You see those little ridges that go in. And up here, ridges. So remember, detail is very important. And if we have the time, we might as well put it in. Okay, now that's not too shabby. Check it all out. We're going to work these edges out a little bit more. Check the onion out. See how that's doing? It's doing pretty good. Remember, you can even do one onion. One onion is great. Say you were to just to take this one red onion and put that in a nice gold leaf frame. You don't even have to have little green guys down here. And maybe that would be a nice little, little uh, mini painting for a corner of the uh, kitchen or the dining area, which would be super. Remember, nobody thinks about painting onions. Poor little onions. They get chopped up and they're put on the hamburgers and the steaks and, and that's it. You guys try painting these. I think you'll like it. I want to go for a little more red down here to carry this color over to here. Now you see how when you start to finish your painting up, we start to bounce color around the painting. Let's take a look at the composition. Take a look at the flow. Notice this onion is not on the same level as this onion. One is behind the other. This onion here overlaps that back onion just a shade, just a shot, to help set that onion back. So it's all of these subtle little things that are important in your painting. Down here, we're going to play around just a little bit more because you have to watch what we call the negative space, and that's the background. We don't want the background overtaking the painting. And if that ha starts to happen, we just bring this out a little bit more. And don't forget down out there that I'm going to be doing some landscape painting for you uh, down the line here. So try to watch all the shows. I don't know exactly when it's going to be coming up, but it'll be coming up for you. Uh, Catherine will be coming on again doing a technique. I'll be doing a vase painting. I, I did that the last time I uh, did a series for you. And we'll be doing a, a vase painting. Of course, I'll be doing uh, my roses. You know I couldn't do a series without doing roses for you. We have another show. We'll be doing poppies. Uh, what else do we do? Oh, I'm going to do a swan. Yeah, like the one on the opening where you, the, the show was playing. And we uh, showed the swan. We have that. You can check us out on our website. We have a website now that you, you can check us out on, and that'll the, uh, the web address will be on the end of the on the end of the show. So check us out there. And let's a lot of exciting things happening. Boy, we're just, this is brand new. And I, Catherine and I really want to uh, thank you for all the support you guys have given us. And you know what else? We, this is I, this is the beginning of our series. And you know what? I miss my cowboy hat. Usually I wear a cowboy hat, hat and I miss my hat. Well, maybe in one of these shows, when I come on, I'm going to have my cowboy hat on because I, I, I reach up here and it's not there. So it's like a baby with sucking his thumb. <laughs> I want my hat. <laughs> well, there you are. I think uh, we did pretty good. I think the painting turned out fine. Uh, remember to uh, keep your gray. Don't paint, uh, put your gray on too dark. Otherwise, it'll, it'll overpower. But notice how, how the, the, the onions are kind of like little characters. You could put little feet and a face on them, and they could walk off the canvas. Well, you guys, thanks for watching out there. Give these onions a try. Give them a shot and set them up and paint them. I think you'll just love it. Thanks for watching out there. And don't forget, you know, to stop and smell those onions along the way. God be with you. And I'll see you next time.